Hello and welcome to another Romeca Corporation video on conveyor design. In today's lesson, we will review how to calculate required belt pull and required power on a roller supported belt conveyor to handle packages. We defined the conveyor as having a length of L and a lift height of H. In the equations which I will show in a minute, uh, will apply both to a horizontal conveyor and an inclined conveyor and we make that adjustment simply with the parameter H. Use this video in conjunction with the dozens of other videos that we've produced and posted on our YouTube channel and our website. They cover such topics of how to calculate belt pull and power on a horizontal slider bed conveyor to handle packages, how to calculate required belt pull and power on a slider bed which is inclined to handle packages, and a video on how to calculate belt tensions and required pull and required power in bulk materials handling applications. Probably the most important equation that I will share with you today is this one. Power equals force times velocity, or in conveyor belt terminology, required power equals belt pull times belt speed. Here's another very important point to remember when calculating required belt power using metric units. Typically cargo is specified in units of mass, for example kilograms. However, belt pool needs to be specified in terms of newtons. So it's essential to convert uh, cargo mass into cargo weight measured at the at the Earth's surface. And we know that one Newton equals one kilogram times 9.81 meters per second per second. That's the way that we convert units of mass to units of weight. Here's the equation that we use to get a very close approximation of required belt pool in package handling conveyors. This part of the equation will allow us to calculate the amount of belt pull required to overcome the friction in the roller bearings. And this component of the equation will allow us to calculate belt pull required to overcome gravity if the conveyor is inclined. Now let's define the terms. L is the length of the conveyor, specified in meters. H is the material lift height, specified in meters. PN is the weight per meter of the belt. PPR is the weight per meter of the rotating parts. And PM is the weight per meter of the products to be handled. To learn how to use this equation, let's make some assumptions on this conveyor and then plug the parameters into the equation. Let's say the length of the conveyor is 30 meters. Let's say the material lift height is 10 meters. And let's say that at any point in time there will be 25 packages on the conveyor. And let's say that the belt speed is 0.5 meters per second. Here are the simplifying assumptions you can use to get a close approximation of required belt pull. You can use 0.04 to closely approximate roller bearing friction in a standard roller. And for PN the weight per meter of the belt, we suggest that you use 73 newtons per meter. For the weight per meter of the rotating components, we suggest that you use 73 newtons per meter. That would be all the rolling stock, both the carrying strand and the return strand, the rollers beneath those two strands of belt. And PM, we need to calculate. And we would calculate that based on typically an average handling rate in a facility. Let's assume that our facility will be handling 300,000 kilograms in an eight hour shift, consisting of 12,000 packages in that same period of time. 300,000 kilograms divided by 12,000 packages during the shift gives us the answer of 25 kilograms per package. We need now to convert that unit of mass 
to a unit of weight. 25 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second per second gives us 245 newtons per package. Now, since we know that conveyor will handle at any point in time 25 packages, we know that 25 packages times an average package weight of 245 newtons per package divided by the conveyor length, let's say it's 30 meters, will give us 204 newtons per meter of product. Now we can sum the three uh, components we need to calculate required pool to overcome frictional drag. We multiply 2 times 73 to get the weight per meter of the belt. We add 73 to get the weight per meter of the rotating parts. And we add 204 newtons per meter to approximate the product. Now we multiply the sum of those against the conveyor length of 30 meters. We multiply that by 0.04 to represent frictional drag in the bearings. And we come up with a required belt pull to overcome frictional drag of 508 newtons. Now we need to add the component of belt pull required to overcome gravity. Since H is 10 meters and the weight per meter of the product is 204 newtons per meter, H of 10 times PM of 204 gives us a belt pull requirement to overcome gravity of 2,040 newtons. Adding the two components of belt pull together equals 508 newtons plus 2,040 newtons for a total of 2,548 newtons. With a belt pull of 2,548 newtons and a belt speed of 0.5 meters per second, we multiply belt pull by belt speed and we come up with required power of 1,274 newton meters per second. And since we know that one watt equals one newton meter per second, we know that the power required to do this work is 1.27 kilowatts. We might be tempted to select a drive motor with a power of two kilowatts. However, it's always advisable, if in doubt on any of the parameters, to do a sensitivity analysis. Let's in fact double check the assumptions we made regarding average package weight. We said that this facility handles 300,000 kilograms in an eight hour shift consisting of 12,000 packages. However, let's say on closer inspection, we find out that from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. each day, 60 kilogram packages are being handled rather than 25 kilogram packages. So let's double check the required power for the time period between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. We'll plug in 60 kilograms per package into our equation, find out what required belt pull is in that time period, and then convert that into required power and see if a selection of two kilowatts is adequate or inadequate. Now let's recheck required belt pull with an average package mass of 60 kilograms instead of 25 kilograms and see if a selection of a two kilowatt motor is adequate. Weight equals 60 kilograms per package times 9.81 meters per second per second, yielding a weight of 589 newtons per package. Let's plug that into our equation. The sum of 146 newtons per meter of belt, 73 newtons per meter of rotating parts, and a PM of 491 newtons per meter gives us a total weight on the rollers equal to 710 newtons per meter. Required belt pull becomes 0.4 times 30 meters times 710 newtons per meter or 852 newtons. Now let's calculate the belt pull required to overcome gravity. An H of 10 meters times a PM of 491 newtons per meter 
yields a belt pull requirement of 4,910 newtons. Now let's add that belt pull component to the belt pull component required to overcome roller bearing friction. Total belt pull becomes a total of 5,762 newtons. Since we know required power equals belt pull times belt speed, 5,762 newtons times 0.5 meters per second yields a required power of 2,881 newton meters per second. Using the factor of 1 watt per 1 newton meter per second, we find that the power requirement equals 2.88 kilowatts. Therefore, we know that a selection of a 2 kilowatt drive would be inadequate. A more appropriate drive selection would be 3 kilowatts or 4 kilowatts. We hope you found this short tutorial useful. For more tips on conveyor design and maintenance, go to our YouTube channel or our website. Thank you for watching.